Okay, so this is uh, Elements of the Guerrilla Army by Mao Zedong. This is from On Guerrilla Warfare. We're still in Chapter 5. This is Organizing the Guerrilla... Organizing... What is this called? Organizing the Guerrilla... Organ organization for Guerrilla Warfare. Let's go ahead and get into this. Elements of the Guerrilla Army. The term element... As used in the title to this section refers to the personnel, both officers and men, of the guerrilla army. Since each guerrilla group fights in a protracted war, its officers must be brave and positive men whose entire loyalty is dedicated to the cause of emancipation of the people. An officer should have the following qualities. Great powers of endurance so that in spite of any hardship, he sets an example, on, set example to his men and is a model for them. He must be able to mix easily with the people. His spirit and that of the men must be one in strengthening the policy of resistance to the Japanese. If he wishes to gain victories, he must study tactics. A guerrilla group with officers of this caliber would be unbeatable. I do not mean that every guerrilla group can have, at its exception, officers of such qualities. The officers must be men naturally endowed with good qualities, which can be developed during the course of campaigning. The most important natural quality is that of complete loyalty to the idea of people's emancipation. If this is present, the others will develop. If it is not present, nothing can be done. When officers are first selected from a group, it is this quality that should receive particular attention. The officers in a group should be inhabitants of the locality in which the group is organized, as this will facilitate relations between them and the local civilians. In addition, Officers so chosen would be familiar with conditions. If any locality, there are not enough men of sufficiently high qual qualifications to become officers. An effort must be made to train and educate the people so these qualities may be developed and the potential officer material increase. There could be no disagreements between officers native to one place and those from other localities. A guerrilla group ought to operate on the principle that only volunteers are acceptable for service. It is a mistake to impress people into service. As long as a person is willing to fight his social condition or position is no consideration. But only men who are courageous and determined can bear the hardships of guerrilla campaigning in a protracted war. A soldier who habitually breaks regulations must be dismissed from the army. Vagabonds and vicious people must not be accepted for service. The opium habit must be forbidden and a soldier who cannot break himself of the habit should be dismissed. Victory in guerrilla war is conditioned upon keeping the membership pure and clean. It is a fact that during the war the enemy may take advantage of certain people who are lacking in conscience and patriotism and induce them to join the guerrillas for the purpose of betraying them. Officers must therefore continually educate the soldiers and inculcate patriotism in them. This will prevent the success of traitors. The traitors who are in the ranks must be discovered and expelled, and punishment and expulsion meted out to those who have been influenced by them. In all such cases, the officers should summon the soldiers and relate the facts to them, thus arousing their hatred and destation for traitors. This procedure will serve as well as a warning to the other soldiers. If an officer is discovered to be a traitor, some prudence must be used in the punishment of judge. However, the work of eliminating traitors in the army begins with their elimination from among the people. Chinese soldiers who have served under puppet governments and bandits who have been converted should be welcomed as individuals or as groups. They should be well treated and re re repatriated. But care should be used during their reorientation to distinguish those whose idea is to fight the Japanese from those who may be present for other reasons. Okay, yeah, so that is uh, that was a very short one. <laughs> but that is uh, that was Elements of the Guerrilla Army. So yeah, so that's the end of chapter five. We're gonna um, that was the organization of the guerrilla army, or organization of guerrilla warfare. Let me see which one that was. What that's called? Organization for guerrilla warfare. Next, we're gonna read chapter six, the political problems of guerrilla warfare. So yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. You know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Tumblr, and Medium. All of these are Marxists. Uh, follow me there, and y'all have a great day. Bladada goi.